is that mine that's in there, is it? Yes, I have two submissions, madam. Okay, thank you. Here's the control. Um, well, I'll let you know when we're ready. Yep. Okay. Um, madam Chairman, Philip Haythorn Thwaite, and with regard to my first submission that I'm doing on behalf of the Dallington Residents Association, may I also say to you, it is now not just mine, it is with the full authority of the executive of which I'm a part and the chairman, Mark Beland, as well, um, who is the chair of the DRA. Um, firstly, as I've left all my notes at home, could I just emphasize that I have worked for a council myself and therefore have some considerable knowledge about how the basics of um, drainage systems go. And one of the first issues that we've always had with the Dudley Creek is that just moving up the creek from the Avon River join at the bridge. When you get about 30 to 40 meters up, you can see quite clearly contractual rubbish that has been pushed off site into the creek. It is certainly not, I can assure you all, what you would find coming naturally out of a creek bed. And even on a day without any rain, it holds millions of liters of water back. Now, it's supposed to be a silt-scouring creek. So this type of thing needs to be looked at urgently, that our creek beds are not becoming a rubbish bed. Um, then one of the next things we have as a problem, as you move up the creek, is the problem of your bridges, the bridges, and how they are built. Now, if you look at the bridges on the Dudley Creek between Marion College and 152 North Parade, as you walk north in this case, you will see three very different designs. At Marion College, you go across the creek at road level. Get to 136 North Parade, and you're going down a reasonable slope to get to the bridge, and the bridge narrows into the creek bed. Get to 152 North Parade at the corner of Banks Avenue, and it's even narrower and you've got about one third of the space left that you used to have only a few yards away up at Marion College. And also, because of problems, I presume, with um, maybe earthquake insurers, the way it's held up at the moment with extra beams underneath it makes a fantastic dam for every storm. So, bits and pieces, it only takes a small branch to go across there. And you have got a dam, which is causing you major problems. And this is something I think you have to look at in the future in policy as to the width, height, and where you allow bridges to be set in relation to property. Um, in simple terms, um, we see the water level there all the time in places being too high. Because as you look at the, the base of the creek, even if pipes have sunk, before the earthquake, the water came out of pipes into it. Now they are down below the level of the creek. But also, 
you have got infestations of bamboo at the likes of Banks Ave Achilles intersection. Now, that, in this case, brings it down to about half a metre in width to a metre. And this is something you've got to sort out from the point of view of the uniformity of the, of the um, bridge, of the creek width in relation to bridges, etc., so that you know what your basic widths are, and then if there's problems, you've got things you can sort out. And I think what's said in here, at this point, I can leave it there. It explains everything that I've said in summary. We would like so you to sort things out from the point of view of making sure that this creek, when you go to places like, as I say there, Averill Street, Paulton Avenue Junction, please make sure that the pipe that comes under the road, you can guarantee that the rubbish that's in it drains out of it. Because at the moment, it's like this, the creek bed, in relation to it. Thank you very much. That was in relation to your first one. Um, and would you like to go straight on to your second one so that we don't cut into any of your time? Yes. Now, um, Tracy's just going to set this going. OK. OK. We'll pause the time while Tracy does that. Right. Madam Chairman, the second one I present to you is on behalf of the Disabled Persons Assembly, Christchurch and District. And we provided you with a list of bus stops um, that we would like to see upgraded in the following year. Now, the reason why we've asked for this to be increased is because of the practical reality of life for the disabled person. 15 new bus stops a year around the city, while it sounds nice, it barely meets less than 1% of the number of bus, route, bus stops that are in this city. And the council has always said one thing, everybody wins when the bus comes first, but it leaves out one word, passenger, us. And nobody is going to stand at a bus stop and get soaked. But the direction of this submission now is going to slightly change in the way I am going to present it to you, because I want to start here on this one. We went to the Hagley Ferrymead Community Board to ask for bus shelters to be installed at the Disabled Persons Centre, Aspire Canterbury. And this was apparently by Luke Morley we were told they were just underway to be put in in the next financial year. But apparently, in conjunction with both ECAN and the CCC, decisions have been given thought to to make this route, Worcester Street, more of a route that is a priority for cyclists. And that, according to what I'm told by ECAN, they are going to strip Route 60 from Worcester Street. Now, this we consider to be an act of discrimination to the disabled person because Route 60 connects the public hospital, the exchange, the disabled person's centre, major malls, and the Burwood Spinal Unit all on one bus route. And this was one of the reasons why we approached you last year to get these ones done, the first two, and we were told it was financially impossible. But with the support of the Hagley Ferrymead Board, these ones we've been told were apparently going to be done. But really, Route 60 must remain, and we need the support of the council to ensure that this route remains and does not get changed in the Metro ECAN review, May 2014. And the petition that I could show you that we have here is a very important one. And this is why we, I want to just draw your attention to this. This is not acceptable. And we do ask 
for your support to keep Route 60 alive and well on the current route that it's on. Now, the reason why we go through these ones, like Springfield Road, St. Albans Street Corner, is that it is outside a medical center. Well, these are places where bus shelters should be. The same like Papua Nui Road, St. Albans Street, it's outside a medical center going inbound there as well. St. George's Hospital on Heaton Street, and then Heaton Street eastbound outside the sports field near the Elmwood Sports Complex. And there's also a children's um, playground there, but it's under trees. Now, who's going to use a bus stop and get soaked by the rain? Um, Russell Street inbound to the city from there. These are places where buses meet, like the Metro Star and other bus routes, and you have to have good intersection interchange bus stops available for people to be encouraged to go from one bus route to another. Um, North Avon Road, we've come to the um, Delta Community Center. That one is a heavily used bus stop, and it could be justified. But here is another one for you, a bit further on. This is the Kenneth Weaver Trust at 707 11 to 711 Barbados Street. Look at the disgusting dirt hole it is, the filth that it is on a council-owned bus stop. Yet over the road is this. Could we please have some explanation as to the difference between the filth and the tidiness on opposite sides of the road? It's unacceptable. Now, Stanmore Road northbound outside Haas Courts, that's a very highly used one. But then this is Petrie Street on Shirley Road corner. Why is there a decent, high quality bus stop outside the Shirley Intermediate School? Then you come down to this dirt hole, this piece of filth, and then you get down to the, Shirley, to the Shirley Primary School, and you've got top class bus shelters. Um, 146 Hills Road is one where we've been asking for because of um, people with physical disabilities use the physiotherapists and everything around there, um, and et cetera. Sorry, we've asked for these for a very good reason, and we feel that Places like Birmingham Drive is a very good place as well. Birmingham Drive is on Route 40, but the bus stop is there, but 32 metres of footpath is not. So you go off the bus shelter, into the filth, walk to the Red Cross Centre, and by the time you get there, you'd wonder as to what you're going to do with your shoes. And I had to experience that myself last year when I was doing my first aid certificate. I mean, that's just disgusting. Um, Hagley Avenue outside the atrium, for instance, it's somewhat interesting. There's the, the bus stop is there, but you wait under trees at, uh, outside the netball courts and you get saturated. But also Orchard Road, um, that's bus stop 19714, if memory serves me correctly. The huge mud holes on each side of a small tar, small tar seal strip is just amazing. It must be a highly used bus stop. And so what we do ask, please, is that the council picks up these things, things like this, and please make our bus system usable because you're not going to get people onto the ECAN buses However much you might think that people will use them, if the council who is responsible for the hard surface, the footpath, the roads, and the like to get onto the bus does not have these bus stops in good order. And I think, Madam Chairman, that basically finishes what we have to say. Thank you very much, and it leaves a uh 
few minutes for questions. Are there any? Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Uh, just in relation to Dudley Creek, of which a, a good chunk of it goes through the Burwood Pegasus Ward, yes. the council has identified some of the issues such as uh, clearing the, the waterways, obviously, and things like flat gates. Are they the flat gates? Is that something that's relevant to that part of the street? Um, the problem is, if you put flat gates in on the Dudley Creek at the moment, the question is where would the water go in these... Um, if you're trying to keep it off property, maybe at the lower end. But the problem is at the bottom end as well. The land is sinking as well. But you can see that even up at, um, as I said, where the bamboo is at, at um, Achilles Banks, you can see as well there that there's been contractual rubbish dumped. But also one of the other problems, Glenn, that you have with the Dudley Creek is that where these contractors have put in the ultra-fast broadband cables, you've now got a situation whereby at 34 to 36 Banks Avenue, the side of the road is collapsing because they have not done the repair of their work after they've laid the cables properly. And if more rain gets into where they put those channels, you're going to have the whole of Banks Avenue collapse at the junction and the whole bank go in, into the creek as well. And I went down and photographed it yesterday and rung through your, um, to your um, centre and told them what was happening. And you can already see the side of the, of the bank that has been built to raise the road starting to move because of the fact that other work is not being done properly and not being sealed off properly. So that when they go along and they fill their trenches, etc., they fill them properly. And it's the same in some respects with fixing the roads. They come along and they, people fill their trenches, put the tar seal over the top, then you ring again another um, few weeks la later and say, would you please fix the pothole because it's all sunk, because it wasn't compacted properly in the first place. Um, with, with regards to uh, bus stops, the, um, Many of our bus stops have um, glass windows, etc., which gets um, scratched and broken. Do you have an, a, an ideal design that we could look at? Because some, obviously, that do have shelters are pretty... Um, there is your ideal design of your bus stop. Um, I will comment on it for you as to why. Firstly... It is totally plated at the back with steel. Secondly, the bench is at the end, and it has a space for a wheelchair, which meets the requirements of Section 21 of the Human Rights Act as a, as a non-discriminatory bus stop. But as you can see, if you just look around, um, you can see how and why it's important to maintain things around it, because you can see that because areas have been patched every so often, they're breaking up. This is on New Brighton, on New Brighton Road. Whereas, if you go to this one he, um, here at the front, um, which I use as my to, to start or go further in, I will the other way. That one on St Albans Street. Two seats have been put inside it, but there's no space inside it for the wheelchair. So. What I say to you is that the ad shell one and the first one I, and the one I showed you before both are consistent in design. And my advice to you is to get rid of the glass off the back of any and every shelter, regardless of whether, whether it's the ad shell ones or your own, because you can't smash the glass on there because there is none at the back. And that would be how I would say to you, that's what I would expect to see as a minimum design, because it meets your specifications. The timetable is inside there, under cover. The timetable can be put at both ends. Um, the metro finder is beside it. It's the wheelchair space. You and I can use it. And it is one of the very good designs, like I showed you the ad shell one there. 
If you look at it carefully in principle, you can see the bench is the same, the wheelchair space at the end. Um, uh, you can just see it from a different angle there. But get rid of the glass. OK, thank you very much, Philip. We've actually gone uh, a few minutes over time because you covered quite a wide range of things. But well, thank you, Madam Chairman. And I do hope that what's been, what we brought to your attention, we can see some change. Thank you very much for, for coming and for both of your submissions.